Welcome back. We're still working in the tent here. We're working on the starboard chine. I'd shown you the port chine earlier, and all we're doing now is the, we had glued this thing together and taking that little scraper and cleaning it off with all of where the squeeze out was. This thing works real well. Just pulling the screws and scraping the outside edge. We're going to demount it. You, you'll see where I had these little pleats that I'd put in. You'll see them right there on the bottom of the transverse. And uh, I made them, I installed those so that you'd just be able to take that chine and pop it in there and just put one screw in and kind of hold it together. Now what I'm doing here is I'm, uh, once I put those chines in there, they kind of weren't aligning correctly. So I wound up putting some screws through the, through the chine into the hole, just to try and help hold it in place. Uh, and maybe what I thought was flatten it out properly. I'll actually wind up changing that later. What I'm doing now is these little pieces of wood here, is just like little cleats I'm screwing into the transverse bulkheads. I'm actually preparing to put those sides on that you see laid on top of the boat. And all these will serve the purpose of is they'll just hold it together. Once I, once I put it up there, it'll kind of hold it onto the boat until I can get the zip ties in there. This is a good example. It's just, there's a lot of sitting around and looking and thinking. There's so many things to do and so many little items that it's hard to stay focused on what's the task at hand. All right, so we'll try and go ahead and cover this compartment and the one on the other side, since we got these signs on. Um, and we covered up that hole right there. I showed you that last time. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go rough cut this fiberglass, bring it in here, and then we'll fit it before I start pulling these fillets and basically getting epoxy all over this. So there's only this one, uh, this one and the other one we're gonna try and pull today, and then maybe try and do those gussets in the stern um, since we're gonna have some thickened epoxy made up. So what I'm doing here is, so it'll be 11 inches there, 12 inches there, another eight inches there so that'll be 31 inches so we'll cut it 31 inches square and then we'll set it in here and then we'll come back and trim it like I showed you I did last time so let me go cut a couple of pieces 31 and then we'll come back and lay it in here and go through that one more time and here I go again here I just lay in this fiberglass in there I, I talked through all those measurements and you know, when I started sticking it in there, it looked like I was way off, but I really didn't have it seated in there right. So all I'm doing is here, I'm kind of shaping it into where it needs to go. I'm going to start marking it, you know, knowing which way is the bow and which way is the transfer. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm better off whenever I label where the where those edges and those joints are. And I didn't do it on the area, yeah, I do do it on this one. Which gives me a good start to line up with in here and then you know you've seen me do this before I just do this and then uh, pop it out of there take it with the shears and just cut it off it's ready about to pull some thickened epoxy together to put all these in the transom we got them all labeled where they go so just putting these little washers on there so when i put them in there it'll all be good i think i may be like usual maybe doing a little overkill here um, i think it's only required on the on the transom itself but i've already cut them all to be on this bulkhead, this uh, the aft portion of this rear bulkhead. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and stick them in there. And like I said, all it could do is make it a little more stiff, uh, in a little radius. So just trying to tack these on there. So when I go to 
when I have a thick and epoxy all over me. All I gotta do is stick these in here. So all I'm doing is just taking them and basically just getting them started. Just bought in the start of this deal. I think I bought a package of hundred of these big old fender washers. And I just use them and throw them back in the box there. And I'm done with them. So we'll uh, just put all these on. Figure when I get that about to do the fiberglass on those last two internal forward compartments before I put the whole sides on. Whenever I do that I just make enough thickened epoxy that I can go ahead and mount these in the back. Shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be an issue where I gotta hurry up and get to them and lay the fiberglass and all because it, I'm gonna probably come over the top of look at this cool you Did you believe that I put those on the wrong side of every single one. So, maybe just a sign I'm not thinking today. The wrong side of every single one. So I need to be like a NASCAR pit crew. on this side. Big Kuyon. If y'all don't know out there, Kuyon is like a fool uh, in the state of Louisiana in the Cajun dialect, Cajun language. You know, I'm a transplant so I can't lay any claim to it. But Kuyon, I never forget there was a comedian named Ralph Bagno. I want to say he's from Erath or uh, South of Lafayette somewhere. And he used to, he always just, you know, say a kuyo was a fool. And he used to always say kyo. And he used to say that the word kyo, you hear all the kids and say, oh, that's like saying, I am amazed. And generally, that's not a good thing. You know, you like to see a, right nowadays, you walk into a Walmart and you see somebody and you're like kyo. That's generally not a good thing. Probably saw something you didn't need to see. I don't know if I'll probably keep this, this Oscar's interpretation of Cajun dialect in there or not, but there you go. A little something. That's kind of why my brain works and probably why I'm screwed up like this. Thinking about something else rather than what I'm doing. But that's part of the fun of building this damn thing. All right, y'all seen me do this before. This is just uh, how I pull fillets. Made the thickened epoxy. This is a uh, two to one epoxy and I'm using uh, two parts cabasil to one part uh, mixed epoxy and I just use this spatula and lay it out there and then I use this little two inch radius tool to pull all my radiuses and then I come back with that spatula you know from the dollar store and just uh, smooth it out and then and uh, I'll also use a little uh, two inch scraper here to kind of clean up the edges uh, you'll see me coming with that but it's been working real well and I'm kind of breezing through here so you can see it one more time if, if not, there's plenty of other videos before this that show it in a more detail. Here we go. I've been talking about putting these gussets in there, so now we're going to try and do it. We need some more thick in epoxy. We have to make some more of them. Yeah, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for it to kind of scooge out, scooge out of there.
close. And then we'll mix it more real quick. Come back and finish these off. All right, we want to make some more thick in the epoxy. I'm going to try to put my little two inch radius in there. Watch what happens this time. I bet you can get some squeeze out. That's what we're shooting for. That's probably real good on the grill right there. Um, off of the course, folks. Try and do this and stay out of the way. That looks more better, don't it? I say that jokingly. I used to work with a man. He said it all the time and got me in the habit. Now it's a bad habit. Now that's why I got these two confused. I'm going to speed it up here. As you can see, all I'm doing is I'm pulling a little fillet right there, putting some epoxy in that corner, and I screw it down. Uh, the fender washers weren't the best um, because they stuck out a little bit too far, but I mean, it worked out pretty good. You know, just getting the epoxy in there and then putting those gussets in, in uh, so that they'll hold. And all I'm doing here is I come back after after it's uh, I just mounted uh, screwed those in there and mounted them and I come back with this little scraper and I clean it up because I know that all of this stuff here is going to actually set up I'm not I'm not going to be going on top of the fiberglass so I know I'm going to have to come back and sand it but even still the more of this I can clean up with this little scraper the better off it's going to be and it, it it actually turned out better than what I thought so. Just coming back here, clean it up as best I can, uh, and then I'll come back and sand it all down with a little file sander. Well, this is what we're going to do today. First thing this morning, we're going to fiberglass these last, these last things. This one and on the other side there, I was able to finally 
get to those since I put the chines on. I was able to pull this fillets in here yesterday evening, and they're still they're still kind of soft. So they hadn't fully cured, so everything ought to stick good to there. We're gonna put the fiberglass in and go ahead and once again, I'm not clear whether I need to do this or not, but I'm just gonna keep doing it. It ain't gonna hurt anything. Put the tabs on the ends. Uh, measured all this out yesterday, so hopefully it should should go pretty easy. And then uh, back here in the back, in the transom, kind of the same story. Was able to put in all of these gussets. Um, went and looked, and the plans actually don't call for them on the uh, transverse bulkhead side, only on the transom side, but I went ahead and pulled them, put them in there, and uh, hopefully we'll get that all cleaned up. You know, it's another one of those, the epoxy was really thick, but you know, I mixed it up really thick, but it was pretty hot and sticky when it went on, so kind of got a little runny there at the bottom. But uh, it's in there. These are all in there nice and firm, so that's what we're going to be tackling first thing this morning. All of these are you know, we did all those last episode, last video, whatever. So it'll be uh, just this compartment here on it. This is the one on the port side and that one over there on the starboard side. Like I said, pulled all these fillets and all. I've shown you how I do that. I may even have a little bit of footage, probably going to fast forward through that. But that's what's happening today. I kind of hate to keep running things on fast forward, but this is pretty straightforward once again with the epoxy. And then I'm going to have to pull out the old scraper uh, because that, even when I pull those fillets, even though they just sat there uh, overnight, um, you know, where I just didn't get them cleaned up really well on the edges there with the scraper, i got to come back and, and smooth all that out or else the fiberglass won't lay down and you'll get, a, you'll get a, an air pocket in there you're going to have to deal with. So we're just by taking the time to come back and scrape this out, it really does work out really well. So now here I go, I'm really going fast now, just really rolling this epoxy out. Uh, you want to roll it out, you know, give it a little bit of time to set in there and start kicking off so it gets a little tacky. It just helps you when you go to put in your fiberglass. That's what you can see I'm doing here. Is, you know, I have to come back and do a little more scraping. Um, but, but just rolling this epoxy out so, so that it'll have a little time. And I actually do this before I start wetting out the, other, the epoxy that's going to go in these compartments so that uh, it can it can kind of get sticky. What I'm talking about here is that this epoxy has now been sitting there, and this is that little these little nap rollers I talked about. And if you've ever used one of these, with, like painting or whatever, when it's when you when you're low on paint or it's it's you know the, the roller's fairly dry, you can hear it kind of grabbing the surface, and, and you can actually see it here on the surface. Uh, it just kind of makes it makes that epoxy that's on there to me it makes it stick up and gives it more surface area and just helps to grab that fiberglass when you go to you know stick it on these vertical surfaces it just holds that much better and here it is you know just another piece of, of uh, wetted out fiberglass and uh, I'm gonna run through this pretty fast but you, know, you kind of get the idea if you hadn't hadn't seen this and it's just basically putting it in there but you know the, what I found is that you, you use your hands with the reference lines like you can see the arrow pointing towards the bow you've got the lines where the where the the, the, uh, the seams are where the edges are where the corners are is probably the best way to describe it and then just take your time and roll it out you know work on that bottom angle first and once you get it straight you kind of work up the heel like i'm doing there um, it seems to work out really well, but just take your time and lots of roll and lots of lots of surface pressure. But you know, it's not really really strong pressure. It's just consistent, you know, going over and over and over it, uh, and then coming back with a fin roll here in a little while. To me, after it's had a chance to set up for a little while, and you kind of just roll it out and get all your air bubbles out really well. So this is an example of the fin roller. This is, I'm gonna be really short here, but it's just, you just do this over that whole compartment, taking your time, running over it a couple of times to help it flatten. Well, 
this is all of this one both of these are done got the tabs on the end you can kind of see what's going on there i'm gonna come back in here once this hardens i'll trim off all the top and i've done my level and all i'm gonna come in here this problem that i have where that transverse is a little bit high and i'm gonna go ahead and plane it down it's only about maybe need to take an eighth maybe a quarter of an inch maybe at most and then just to make sure that i said i did all of them i'm gonna come back and, and put tabs in these these are the first two compartments that i did so i'll come back around here walking around this is front two so this will be here's the actual the bow i guess i should show the whole thing i got stuff strewed everywhere i got to leave in a little while to go to a soccer game so this is one we just did here and they got the tabs in it front and back so it's you know you see them going there all that come back and we'll cut out these little holes and uh i hope the rest of my fiberglass goes like this if i take my time i can really get it done this was to show like earlier where I was talking about where I spent so much time on the last video making that transition on that doubler. You can see that fillet in, this, in the edge there, but down there on the bottom, it uh, like it didn't want to stick. So I wanted the same thing happen. Not as bad back here in the back. You can see it a little bit back there. I hope, hope the light will get in there and you can see it. I mean, it's not terrible. But uh, all of these are done. Once again, trim these out. Come back and sand these little pieces. <laughs> That's just where I got I got sloppy. Had a little mistake there. So all the internals are done. I'm gonna before I put the sides on, I'm gonna fix this part. I'm gonna fix this. Get all the tops level. Get all that straight. And I'm gonna come back and do these. Um, so. Probably the next time we'll be sanding, sanding out, you know, along the edges here. Which again, I think it's overkill, but sanding that up a little bit and uh, probably working in the back of that transom, trying to clean that up a little bit. But that's the next stage there. This is kind of overview. It's gonna look a lot a lot different once the sides go on we'll be able to start putting the decks down routing the pipes the uh, conduits and stuff kind of got a uh, got straight on that and once again these are the little gussets uh, it only calls for them on the stern on the transom uh, but i went ahead i had them cut so i went ahead and put them in there and i'll uh, come back and sand all that out so that when the glass goes in there try and get all that glass but i'm a little confused like joe ortel said to make sure you fiberglass this transom before you flip it over but it's got a the fiberglass has got to come all the way to this transverse bulkhead here so I'll probably have to take this cradle piece out better walk around kind of where things are you can see like I said these are the sides of the boat oh I'll show another problem that I got that I'm gonna have to fix down here I didn't I didn't make sure I didn't have enough zip ties in there to make sure that it was all the way closed up so this side isn't as bad but like all of that I'm gonna fill with thickened epoxy before I start doing the glass and I also have the, the uh, jack plate so I'm probably gonna go ahead and try and mount it and bore those holes out overbore them uh, fill them with epoxy so that there's no no water no water can go through there all right be real short here i'm gonna run this pretty fast all i'm doing is laying the epoxy i'm gonna come back and run these little tabs out i take him a little sander with a vacuum and dust mask and long sleeves and everything and uh, these are just little pieces that i, that I cut out prior and Put on my little table and wet it out. I've shown how to do that in previous videos. You can go back and look at those. Uh, it's pretty pretty consistent here, and I'll just put those in there, roll them out, and uh, add a little more epoxy to them. Uh, 
come back with the fin roller and get them nice and nice and smooth, all wetted out, bonded real good, and once again, automate things really strong. Yeah, now you can see I'm just taking my little planer. I've been threatening to do it. Yeah, that was a good move, wasn't it? What's the word of the day? There you go, a puyo. So I'm just taking this and just keep in mind that planer has an adjustment knob there on the front where you can cut anywhere from 1 64th. You know, uh, it takes very, very small amounts off. And so you just kind of take your time and just sneak up on it and uh, works pretty well for what I was trying to do here. I, I worked on this quite a bit. I'm just trying to make sure everything's level because the stringers I figured out they were all level and I'm just trying to get that bulkhead there down. I want it, I want it level going across but I also want it to where it's all flush with all the other ones and uh, all I'm kind of doing here, it's a little difficult with you know, little hangers of fiberglass sticking up and around, but um, I just kind of tuned it up a little bit, um, and I think that once you get that half inch uh, plywood that goes down, it's going to all set, because all, all the tops of these, you're going to have floor supports and all in here, and all that will have thickened epoxy on top of it, so you'll actually be able to you got a little variation it's all going to sit down and find a fine level and find you know find its seat so to speak and it'll all bind but on the tops of these things there's little pieces of fiberglass they're like little needles um, and i'm trying to keep them sanded or scraped down but man they still get me as you can see there I've been doing right here is I had this center transverse that was sticking up about a quarter inch higher there so I just took my little planer first I leveled off all of these stringers made sure that they're level As you can see they're perfectly plumb port to starboard and I checked the, the angle going forward and aft and there's actually some fall to the stern, which is what you want. At least what I think I want. And so all I did was I come in here and you can see I pulled me a little line in here. Set the level here, put the marker up underneath the bottom. Made me a line, so at least I had a little reference line. You can see there, I took about half the line. And here I got down right there. And so hopefully now when I go to put the deck on, it'll all be flat. So I feel like now that I got that done, and this morning came in here and talking about this and I put those little tabs I'll come back maybe and roll them out a little bit but uh, that'll be all of the internal compartments that are fiberglass so now I'm fixing to put these sides on the boat be done with them so I've been threatening to do this for a while so I'm gonna finally go ahead and mount these sides and I Mount of those little cleats, you can see little white pieces of wood right there on the transverse bulkhead. And uh, trying to do this by myself, you know, this is this is about a full sheet, or you know, I'm gonna say it's probably more than a full sheet of 3 8 plywood. Um, so fortunately, that little garbage can and the rail it all just kind of worked out. So I'm just getting it set up, and I'm gonna show you here in a second uh, that this this side of this boat should should wind up flush with the bottom of the chine and you'll see me checking that quite a bit I'm gonna show you a diagram here in a little while but all I'm doing is because I put those cleats up there all I have to do is come back and those cleats are attached to the transverse bulkheads I just come back and run the screw into the side so that it holds it but here's the alignment you can see number two there is the actual side of the boat and number four is the bottom chine there's actually two layers of chine there's one that actually you can see here the other one is up underneath that um, 
but this shows you that uh, and, and you'll see me focusing on trying to make sure that 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 side of the boat is flush with the bottom of that chine so that when I flip the boat over and I go to finish the bottom um, it's as fair as possible fair meaning that it's smooth and level and the joints can all work out well um, which will save me a lot of sanding at the end which anybody who's done this will tell you that that's uh, that's probably the worst part is the sanding at the end So now here it is, I'm jumping on the port side and I'm going to do the best I can. It's odd because you can see that side actually looks like it, it you can, it, the shape is that it turns to the right right there and you would think that, that it would go the other direction, but because of the, the way that that boat curves in the front and kind of, kind of rises a little bit, that's just the way that it, that it's cut. And, um, the designer Adam has done a great job of the way this thing goes together. You can see, I mean, I've never done this before. I've said it before. No, never done it. As you can see, I mean, look right there. Cool. What are you going to do? So I try and speed this up. You know, once again, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I go get my low garbage can again. That's what it takes. Uh, and uh, I just pick up the sides and I use that cleat right there in the end. And all I'm trying to do with those cleats is just to kind of hold it up there until I can come back and, and start drilling out the holes and putting the zip ties to hold it together. Now at the front of the boat here, I'll start running these zip ties and all, and you'll see me pulling it together. And it's pretty remarkable that the chines, um, the two layers of chines, and both of these sides, I mean, all this stuff was cut out beforehand. It all just comes together. So all I'm doing here is I'd already drilled holes in the chines, if you, can, you may be able to see it. Um, I'm, I'm screwing holes into the sides where I can come back, and you'll see me uh, come back with the uh, zip ties here they are right here and these are these are fairly big zip ties because i found that um, i'm able to kind of get it pulled tight and, um, a little better and i'm just sticking them through there and once again you just put the zip ties you zip tie this thing together and then you come back with epoxy thicken the epoxy and you kind of make little short sections and you just kind of glue it in place um, once that's set, you come back, cut out all the zip ties, and then you just start pulling your fillets and get ready to finish it all out. So that's what I'm doing here, and it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a tedious process, but it works. I spent a lot of time up underneath this side right here. You can see in another picture, in the earlier pictures, I had a chine that just wasn't, it kind of had a hump in it. So I, I, the camera had cut off. It's actually so hot that the camera cut off on temperature. Um, I guess from, from running and being charged, but I spent a lot of time up underneath the uh, this port, this starboard side right here, getting that chine and that side of the boat flush. And I may talk about that you know, coming down the road. I hate to keep doing everything and fast forward, but it's just this, you know, these things take so much time. And you know, here it is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull the uh, zip ties together here at the bow and it's all going to come together. It's going to work out. You know, there's camera shut off. There's a lot of stuff that happened after. You can see it right here. It came together. It's really, really straight. Everything's looking fairly good. There's a couple things, like I said, that I got to deal with, but I'm um, going to keep working at it. Um, it, it grew a lot when I put this thing together. So um, keep plugging away and uh, appreciate you watching. Once again, this is a Salt Boat Works FRS 18 um, flats version. There's two different versions. You can build the, you can buy the kit. It's for the bay or the flats, and I'm building the flats. Um, so I appreciate you watching. Uh, at the end here, you're going to see like a little trailer of all the other cool stuff I get to go do. And man, that list grows every day. Um, 
stuff I get to go do. I'm very lucky. So if you can, check out my other stuff too. It's uh, I'd appreciate it. Like I said, subscribe, comment. I'd love to interact with whoever.